Hello everyone and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. I have my piece of paper taped onto a bigger piece of paper so that I can move it easily um, because I don't really feel like taping the borders of the sky because we're going to be doing a landscape that kind of covers the whole thing. And this is sort of fall themed. It's, uh, I would say it's more like a August vibe, but it's, I'm gonna just say it fits the fall theme, the late, not even late fall, it's like early fall, but whatever, we're just going with it. So you can take, um, I don't even know what color this is, this is inspired, this photo is from Creativity Explode, so, uh, I am trying to figure out the colors that are being used and I'm having a really hard time so I'm just mixing random things together but any like orange beige um, purpley kind of that tone will do plum and then just water it down I don't know we'll we'll see what this turns into because right now this is not really the color I want but actually so I have that color ready, but I'm going to first um, grab like a yellow and just paint kind of a circle starting from the center that goes outwards like this. Because our sun is going to be somewhere there but it's just easier to do it this way and then I am going to take that original color that I was trying to figure out and I'm gonna apply that kind of turned into an orange which is not what I wanted add some gray maybe and we're just filling in the remaining area with that color. Now, I am looking at this right now and thinking that this is definitely going to need a second coat. Because it looks quite horrible right now. I'm taking some yellow. Mm, actually, you know what? If I take a nude, it might neutralize a lot of these. That certainly did not have the effect that I wanted it to. <laughs> oh man, okay. Uh, I am going to switch to my mop brush and hope that I can salvage this. in some way. Because a mop brush is meant to put on like nice fluid backgrounds. So that fixed it a little bit. I'm gonna let this dry, I think, and then just do a second layer uh, because this isn't dark enough anyways, so. Let's hope this looks a little bit better in about five minutes. Okay, so I think that that's dry. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did the first time. I'm actually gonna use a much lighter yellow, like less orange, and hope that that addresses the issue with this sun that I'm experiencing. And then I'm going to take the gray mixed with, ah, and I don't want brown, yikes. Just improvising the color here. And 
I can't believe that this is going to be released in November. Like it is, it is July. Oh my goodness, I did not have a good night's sleep, which is why I'm yawning so much. Um, but yeah, yesterday evening I wrote out my tutorials for November and December, so those will be done within two weeks. And that's kind of crazy to me weird painting Christmas in July but what needs to be done needs to be done okay so once again I'm taking nude to try and blend this yellow nicely in with whatever color this is supposed to be um, actually, now I'm just taking that brighter yellow that I mentioned, and I'm just using that over top. Ugh, this does not look the way that I wanted it to. I've kind of given up a little bit on this. This is, this just looks very blah, and all the water is pooling here. Because Julia was way too lazy to tape the borders. That does not look really good, I'm gonna be honest. This, uh, I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer and we'll see what it looks like. So this is still not the color or even the opacity that I want, but I am not going to do a third layer because I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference. Like the way that I'm trying to achieve this look with, with the... I think the reference photo I'm looking at was painted with acrylic paint and that is why they could create the look that's in the painting. And obviously we're not using acrylic paint, so I'm going to stop trying to achieve that exact same look. What I do want to do is take, um, you can take white acrylic paint, which is um, what I'm going to do. Or, no, I was going to do that, but now I'm second guessing myself. I think instead I will use my white watercolor because the the new palette that I'm using, which I have a link for in the description if you're interested. Um, it is very, very opaque, like the colors are very opaque and the white will likely show through here because I'm just painting on the sun. So basically right in the center of that yellow orb that I attempted to paint. So It'll look, I'm gonna make it much more opaque than that, probably using acrylic paint, but I just want to get the circle done down first because I'm going to grab um, opaque yellow and paint around it. Because I wanna kind of What's the word I'm looking for? Really make that sun stand out, the white part of the sun stand out. And it'll stand out a lot more when I add uh, white acrylic paint to it. But I'm just going to spread this out but I have to be mindful that I don't add too much water or it will cauliflower on the edges. Sort of, I don't even know if that made much of a difference. 
but just to be sure it doesn't cauliflower, I'm taking toilet paper and drying the borders so that it doesn't have a chance to kind of sprout into that cruciferous shape. Um, so now I'm gonna take white acrylic paint. I really should be waiting for this to dry, but I guess acrylic paint isn't going to spread in the same way that watercolor does. And I wanna really make that white sun stand out. We're probably going to have to do a, a few layers um, simply because I use dollar store acrylic paint and it's not very opaque. It's not the best quality. So that's, that's my first layer there. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. Um, the sun at least, but we're going to continue painting otherwise because the other things are not dependent on this sun. So in this photo, this seemed like a good idea, but looking at it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really complicated. There is a windmill, but it seems to be like a darker version of the color that we used around the sun, whatever color that is, like a, some sort of a plum color. Um, and I have a little bit left on my palette. I think combining gray and like a plum will help you achieve that look. I'm going to freehand this. I keep wanting to say watermelon, but it is a windmill. Um, so it has like, kind of looks like a rocket ship at the top. <clears throat> And then it kind of spawns down like this and it it fades quite a bit in the painting and again they have the ability to fade this out the way that they did because they used acrylic paint uh, I'm going to try and do my best to achieve the same thing and it looks really cool in the painting because of the way they faded it out, it looks like the sky is extremely hazy. And I will try my best. I'm watering it down basically and adding, oops, too much gray. I was gonna say a little bit of gray, but that was too much. I'm trying to like, extend the color while just adding a tiny bit of water and that seems to have faded it out a little bit you'll probably probably bring up some of the color underneath but i think i'm okay with that it should be more rocket ship like at the top I probably should fix that. It should be more pointed, like so. Anyways, that is, you can play around with that until you're happy with your fading job, but I'm okay with the way that that looks. So we also have to add the propellers now to this thing. Um, so I'm going to actually try to use... this brush so it kind of comes out like this oh 
my goodness gracious. It's hard to verbally explain what I'm doing here. Um, I'll go a little closer. It would be easy, easier for you probably if you just looked up an image of a windmill and then used that as your reference. Because I am just freehanding this off of the reference that I'm looking at and it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Seems to have like a tic-tac-toe pattern. I should have made that longer. I still can, luckily. I can just extend this. I do want it to look somewhat proportional. And then you'll do the same thing on the opposite side, but it'll be like this part will be on this side because it's as if it's uh, moving downwards or it's moving counterclockwise. <clears throat> so I will have the sky coming out again. I'm really, I mean, I probably shouldn't be saying this on my own channel, but no offense to all you lovely viewers. I really appreciate you viewing all my work, but I am so looking forward to having a break from uh, all of this painting. Like, it's just kind of been nonstop for a while now as I tried to reach my goal of pre-painting the whole year and my future me will thank me for this when I am sleep deprived and stressed out and cranky I will be very happy that after a long day I don't have to sit in my tiny bathroom and paint tutorials because they will already have been painted. Wow, that is a bit of a lopsided, uh... <laughs> this is why you should pencil in your step first, guys. This is exactly why. But we can rectify this and I'll tell you how. Um, I will make my windmill propellers longer and I'll extend this one on this side. And that looks a little more proportional. There was a, a moment not long ago when I was painting and I was like, how am I going to continue to, sorry, I need to concentrate for this one bit because I need to see where this guy's gonna come out of. Okay, it's gonna go here. 
And then it's going to go like this. Yeah, so there was a time where I was painting not too long ago and I was thinking, how am I going to just keep coming up with painting content um, like I've been doing that this is I, th I think it's the third year but I don't know anymore and I was just like how how do I have you need so many you unique ideas when you're doing these tutorials because you need a new tutorial twice a week and it helps that the seasons change and you have ho different holidays so you kind of have a chance to break things up a little bit but it's still um, a lot to try and come up with new ideas all the time and when you're doing it in bulk fashion as I like to call it where you know, I am painting a year's worth, like I'm condensing a year's worth of tutorials into just a few months. Like you, and you have to constantly be changing um, the, the seasons and like having the foresight to recognize, okay, now we're painting December, which means I have to switch into Christmas mode and stuff like that. and. I was just wondering how am I going to keep coming up with the ideas or even have the energy to come up with a third year's or a fourth Christmas's worth of content. Like I'm pretty sure I've painted all the Christmas cards I could at this point, but there's always more things you can come up with. Creativity is endless so I just went over I I think my son was dry so I went over it again with the white acrylic paint just to make it a teeny bit more opaque and I did that before I finished my windmill because I think this last arm is going to overlap with the sun it might and so I just wanted to make sure the sun was done before I did that last part. So, any hoosies? So yeah, once I'm done these tutorials by like hopefully within two weeks, I will be very excited to take a break for, I guess it'll be like five months, but don't worry, you won't notice from your end. Like I, I once, when I was saying this the first time many months ago in a video that this is one of my goals to do all of 2023 before August I think um someone was like oh so you're not gonna like comment anymore no no I will still be doing what I always do which is replying to comments um and all that I just won't have to sit in my bathroom and paint anymore <laughs> but I will still be active on YouTube and still be doing all the things that I would do otherwise. So you won't even notice that I'm gone. Or, because I won't be gone. You won't notice that this was filmed in July. 
Okay. So that doesn't look <clears throat> nearly as bad as I thought it was going to. Um, I kind of wish I had made these propellers or these arms a little bit smaller, but I mean, what can you do? So the last thing we're going to do, which is going to make this whole thing come together is um, add black wheat features in the bottom area. So you can actually, ah, oh, you know, I wish I had the foresight for this too. I would have, when we were doing the background, I would have made this part black, like physically the whole thing would be much, much darker. And then I wouldn't have to um, paint as many of these wheat crops to fill that area in because it would already be dark and it would do half the work for me. But you, you learn as you go. So yeah, basically the wind is blowing in this direction. So I'm gonna have all the wheat tilted <clears throat> towards that direction. So I'm just, technically I should be using my other brush, but um, like my size quadruple zero for these details, but it doesn't hold as much water. And so I'd have to reload every, with every single brush stroke. Whereas this one I can just, as you can see, keep going and going and going. But you know, I pay for it in the sense that my wheat crops are not as detailed and thin and beautiful. I really don't like that uh, dragged look where when you drag your brush and there's not enough pigment or water left and so it kind of jumps. I really don't like that. Oh, this tutorial is already almost 30 minutes long. I need to start filming shorter <laughs> tutorials so that I can have the energy to keep going. But today, today is just a day where I didn't get enough sleep the night before, so. That's why I don't feel peachy. It's also funny because it seems like every few months I make my canvas smaller and smaller and smaller because I just buy those big sheets of cotton paper and then I cut them down to size and this one is half the size that I was using a couple months ago. And you probably don't notice because I can do like close-ups so it kind of looks the same to you, which is good, but it requires a lot less effort for me because I'm working on a way smaller scale. But see what I mean? Like you can still see all of the yellow through this and I painted so much of it on. And if I had just painted that black, I would have had this really nice black base to work from already. And this wouldn't look, you know, as sparse. And so I'm so tempted to just take, you know, black and fill it in. The issue that you get with that is that it hasn't been naturally transitioned into the background. So you get this really harsh line. That's why right now I'm trying to 
almost like dry brush it. That worked somewhat. But anyways, once I get through mid-November, because this is, I think, this is going to be one of the first few tutorials in November, I'm going to start getting into Christmas, and uh, that will be, I mean, it'll be a bit, of, a bit weird to be painting Christmas in the summer, but it'll change things up because it's not going to be predominantly landscapes like I've been doing recently. Um, it'll be a lot more like gnomes and wreaths and greenery and pine branches, which you guys all seem to love, and I do too, and I haven't done those kinds of things in a while, so... It'll be fun to kind of get back into it. Anyway, as you can see, I've started tapering off the wheat as I move to the right corner. And I kind of wish that I had continued that black dry brushing thing all the way down. That, that did a little bit there. Okay, I am coming to the end of the wheat. Or at least to the strands of grass, because this isn't really wheat yet. Maybe I'll just leave it this way, because I am tired. No, we're gonna finish. So now I've switched to my quadruple zero. And here what I'm doing is, uh, oh my goodness, what is happening? I don't even know how that happened. Okay, sorry, I'm talking to myself here. Um, we're creating these tiny little hairs that come off the very end of some of our wheat or grass strands, whatever you want to call them. And they really do have to be hair-like, hair thin, if you want them to look realistic. Um, so if you're not confident with your ability, or maybe you just don't have the right supplies, like if you don't have a brush that's thin enough, it's still possible, but it's gonna be really difficult to achieve this look. Actually, I used to do nail art, so I used to paint nails in these really tiny, intricate patterns, like like fingernails, not construction nails. And uh, I, I didn't have all these specialized products and dotting tools initially, so I would make my own. Like, I would take um, a normal brush, and I would cut off all the bristles except like three, 
three bristles and that would be my liner brush or my detail brush and uh, with dotting tools I remember I would put a sewing pin I would stick it into the end of an eraser like a pencil eraser um, and that would be my dotting tool and uh, you know I just get really creative So if you don't want to spend the money on a detail brush, I totally get it. Like $10 for this tiny little thing. But you can make your own. So you can keep going with these wheat strands for as long as you would like. You can make all of them like that, some of them like that, whatever you desire. I am starting to get, excuse me, a little bit tired of painting these over and over again. I'm just out of curiosity, taking a black liner pen marker that I had laying around. And I, yeah, I like this very much. Okay. So I'm just doing the exact same thing I would have done with a paintbrush. And I'm just going over some individual, like creating new grassy wheat strands or whatever I was about to um, dip my marker into paint out of habit just because I wanted some like really pronounced black details it I can't really do the hair strands very well um, Anyway, I think I, I like this. So I am just going to stick with this the way that it is. Um, I'll take this off so you can see what it looks like, the, all the other colors. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, hit like on this video, it helps me with the algorithm. And I will be sure to see you in the next tutorial.